ladies and gentlemen, good morning. And uh, my presentation today will be on the effect of urban spatial pattern on the heat vulnerability in the city of Tel Aviv. Uh, as we know, the urban uh, climate is characterized by an amplification uh, of air temperature, lowering of air humidity, and moderation of wind velocity. Uh, and the uh, amplification of urban air temperature known as uh, the urban heat island, UHI, which defined as the differences between the temperature measured in the city center to those which measure, measured uh, in the rural area in uh, proximity to the city. And the urban population are exposed to an increasing frequency and intensity of weather extreme due to the uh, global climatic change and also due to the climatic change caused by the uh, city climate. And one of the most important amplification of the UHI is the increase in heat stress during the day in the summer, which aggravate the human discomfort. Coping with the impact of UHI on heat rates motivate policy makers to find solutions to heat mitigation in order to build climatic resilient cities. So the objective of uh, my presentation is to see what uh, kind of intervention can help Tel Aviv to address the urban warming uh, for its most vulnerable communities and to develop, to develop replaceable method to identify climatic, uh, climatically vulnerable neighborhood and public relief space at risk of heat, clim of heat and climate hazard and to measure and visual visualize the heat impact to make uh, informed design decision further uh, uh, monitoring uh, the heat island effect. So, uh, what kind of method, tools, and measurements we have used. Uh, so the methodological approach for this study including four steps. First of all, we produce a local climatic zone map for the city of Tel Aviv. Then uh, we uh, produce remote sensing monitoring of Tel Aviv urban heat island in order uh, to locate the special pattern of the heat island. And finally, we try to assess the human thermal uh, sensation uh, by uh, meteorological measurements. So for the uh, uh, meteorological me measurements, me we placed a station in uh, the core of the urban heat islands that we could identified via remote sensing, and we followed it with mobile measurements in some uh, representative uh, street of Tel Aviv. And then we calculated uh, the urban climate effect on its stress uh, for human being. So a few words concerning the, cli the climate of Tel Aviv. As all we can see, Tel Aviv located at the east coast of the Mediterranean Sea. The city, the area of the city itself is 50 square kilometers. The city spread from north to west along 14 kilometers. And the wide of the city is something between three to six kilometers. And the city is actually the core of the largest, of the largest metropolitan area uh, in Israel with almost 4 million population. The climate is subtropical Mediterranean climate, which means that the average maximum temperature at uh, summer midday is around 30, even 31 degree, and uh, relative humidity is around 60, uh, and can reach a maximum of 80% in summer, while temperature are 30, which is mean severe heat stress. So what we have done, first of all, as I said, we 
try to locate the urban heat island, and then after we have located the urban heat island, we perform measurements in two neighborhoods. One is Florentine neighborhood, the second Shapira neighborhood, and in each neighborhood we have made portable cross-section uh, measurements in order to see in detail the, measure, the uh, urban heat island of Tel Aviv. And now about the method called local climate zone. So this method uh, was firstly presented in 2012 by Stuart and Oak, which I assume that some of you are familiar about Oak. And it uh, contained 70 different units. Uh, some of them is the built up area and the other is the rural area. So I will start with local climate zone, which is compact high rise building above 10 floors. Uh, the second is LCZ2, LCZ compact mid rise, which means between 4 to 10 floors. And LCZ3 is compact uh, low mid rise, which is mean 1 to 3 floors. And then look for LCZ 4, 5, and 6, which are parallel to 1, 2, and 3, but they are open, which is mean open high rise, open mid rise, open low rise. Uh, we have large uh, industrial zone. We have, of course, green area within the city. Uh, and after we can classify the special pattern of the city, we can sometimes understand the city climate. <coughs> so we will start with the thermal image uh, of the city. So the thermal image, of course, when it's the most red, is the hottest place. And one can see very interesting phenomena. Uh, the north of Tel Aviv, which is actually the area that we are located, is relatively cool, which I mean relatively cool, I mean it's not hot like the other area, but it's quite hot. And now Florentine area and uh, Shapira area are actually the hot spot of the city, and we can see if we try to classify it according to LCZ, so this is the north of the city, which is main LCZ4, open mid-rise. And uh, the core of the city is either LCZ2 or 3, which is main quite dense area. Uh, another image is NDVI. To the one which are not familiar with NDVI, it's index that gave us the uh, some uh, detail about vegetation cover. So the green area, of course, are vegetated. And again, look to the dense area, almost without any vegetation. Then when we look at the LCZ2, 3, which are, represent the city, uh, we try to see some uh, geometric and surface cover properties for the local climatic <coughs> sorry, zone of Tel Aviv. So, for example, the Florentine area is covered uh, by building something around 65%, which is mean very, very dense. For example, one can see here the structure uh, of Florentine area, and the structure of Shapira area is less dense, is only 40% uh, building uh, surface fraction. And within the, <coughs> within the Florentine area, we have also a urban garden, which is very important for our uh, presentation. So we enlarge uh, the air photography of LCZ2, of Florentine area, and one can see there is hardly any vegetation in the street, narrow street, and very dense building. And that's in comparison to the north of Tel Aviv. Uh, we can see there, there is open 
uh, space between the buildings and some uh, green pockets in each uh, few streets. And the Shapira area, as I said, is low, but I would like to pay your attention to something else. Most of the roofs are uh, colored in red. And in a minute, you will see the meaning of it. So when we talk about hourly temperature uh, in Tel Aviv, so we set up in Florentine area and in Shapira area and in the rural area south to Tel Aviv meteorological stations that can present in a very good way the urban heat island of Tel Aviv and the urban heat island of Tel Aviv during the day can reach up to three degrees and at night up to four degrees and the hottest place of course you will not be surprised is Florentine area. This is Herzl Street if you familiar with uh, Tel Aviv and Wolfson Street. While Shapira neighborhood is less, uh, it's less uh, uh, dense and less hot. And the north of Tel Aviv is relatively cool in comparison to the uh, uh, south of Tel Aviv, relative humidity during the day is something around 75 and can reach even 100% during the night. And concerning the wind, wind is also a very important factor because wind in Tel Aviv uh, can ventilate the city, uh, especially when it's come from the sea, which is relatively cool uh, comparison to the city during the summer. So one can see in the open space, the green area it's quite a nice breeze of five meters per hour and the same thing along the coast. But at the minute that we are penetrated into the city, then uh, the wind is reduced uh, dramatically. So what is the impact on heat stress? Uh, as index for heat stress, we use the PET, I don't know if you're familiar with the PET, but the PET, we talk about a physiological equivalent temperature, which is, means that if I am at the sun exposed uh, to the wind and to the humidity and to the radiation, uh, the actual temperature that I will feel if air temperature is 30, so in Tel Aviv it can be 58, for example. Uh, and then we have to classify it to level of heat stress, and one can see that in the center of Tel Aviv, uh, half of the day, uh, we can define it as hot, and even sometimes very hot. Most of the hours, look, for example, in the city center, we have warm condition, hot, very hot, and warm condition, 24 hours a day, while in other neighborhood, we will have few hours at night with, without heat stress. So uh, the table can present number of hourly heat stress according to the places in neighborhood, for example, Florentine, Wolfson Street, and Herzl Street in comparison uh, to the beach area. Uh, so one can see immediately the differences between, let's say, the coast and the center of the city. Uh, in addition, as we said, we made some uh, portable measurements in uh, the streets in order uh, to compare between street orientation and the temperature inside. So we took two streets with north-south orientation and east-west orientation. By the way, most of the people uh, thought uh, that East-West orientation is better from Tel Aviv because of the breeze. But it appears that it's a big mistake because the breeze is <coughs> hardly can be filled inside the city as I present before. But West-East Street is exactly in the pathway of the sun, which is mean most of the day is exposed to the sea. 
to the sun, while north-south street will be half of the day in the shade, which is an important factor. Another thing, as I mentioned before, was in a, in a Florentine neighborhood, we had uh, urban gardens that we have measured. So this is the street called Hiskiao Street and the urban garden. And actually what we done, we, we uh, walked with thermometer from place to place, 24 hours a day, and we have measured the temperature. So if we look about points in the street, one can see that the a neighborhood garden can be cool up to four degrees during the day in Tel Aviv, which is mean garden pocket, urban park are the most cool area in the city, and actually uh, they can prevent the urban heat island effect. Now, when we made the cross section and each line it's an hour, so one can see how the temperature reduce in the urban park, and when we leave the urban park, temperature is rising again. But this phenomena is mainly during the day, but not during the night. Then what we try to do also is to understand the structure of the city and its impact uh, on urban heat island. And uh, we took uh, remote sensing measurements uh, the two pictures in the center are uh, satellite pictures. Look at the Florentine area, how it's hot, and look at uh, the second neighborhood, Shapiro neighborhood, how we can identify the urban park temperature in the urban park. Surface temperature can be uh, 27 and, by the way, 38. It's a bare uh, grass, which is a big mistake in Tel Aviv to have a bare grass without shading. But at the meaning that we have, at the moment that we have a shade, temperature can fall down in the middle of the day to 27. Uh, look, for example, an, for, on another phenomena: uh, building with red roof. The red roof can reach 45 degrees. Look at the street in Tel Aviv in the middle of the day can reach 53 degrees, while the building themselves can reach 33 uh, degrees. Another thing that we could observe is also that north-south streets are cooler up to 2 degrees uh, in comparison to west-east uh, streets. And we, of course, look about other a hot spot, for example, basketball court uh, can reach 50 degrees if it's open to the sky. This is ordinary picture and remote sensing picture. Uh, and of course, we have to try and avoid dark uh, surfaces because they are source of heat. And look at the effect of uh, vegetation and trees, they can reduce dramatically uh, temperatures. And of course, the differences between shaded grass and exposed grass, uh, something between 24, 25 degrees for the shading grass and 40 degrees uh, for the exposed grass. Uh, so what are our main conclusions? During the daytime, the city of Tel Aviv can develop an urban heat island of three uh, Celsius degrees and at night, four Celsius degrees. In terms of heat stress, during the daytime, the city is 11 PET warmer than the rural area. At, at night, it's seven degree warmer than the rural area. Uh, the neighborhood garden uh, is evident only during the hot hours of the day. This redu reduction in PET can reach uh, uh, around 10 degrees, and in terms of temperature, between 3.5 to 4 degrees. And maybe some design intervention that can help Tel Aviv to address the urban warming. 
so for mitigation of urban heat island in the, in the internal structure of the city place an important rule determining the UHI special distribution. Neighborhood gardens and trees have the most significant effect on heat mitigation that can reduce air temperature up to two, three and a half degrees. Street orientation is also an important element in heat mitigation air temperature. In north-south or orientated trees, a street can be lower uh, than up to two degrees in comparison to east-west oriented streets in all type of local climatic zone. And if we talk about uh, local climatic zone, uh, so air temperature in local climatic zone two, the compact mid-rise, is warmer by one and a half degrees than LCZ3, compact mid-rise, and by two and a half degrees than LCZ5, open mid-rise, and LCZ6, uh, open low mid-rise. Now, this uh, conclusion are especially for Tel Aviv, and I would like to show, maybe if I have one slide to show from another presentation, because we have made uh, the same uh, experience in the city of Be'er Sheva, which is in the desert. And I will go to the last uh, to the two last uh, slides. So this is the LCZ of sorry. No. Okay. This is the uh, LCZ of Be'er Sheva, and again the. Uh, red is the most dense and the area that is less dense and immediately I will say that this is the problematic area of Be'er Sheva in terms of heat island which means that in Be'er Sheva for example LCZ 1 and 2 are better than LCZ 4 and 5 which is mean in Be'er Sheva we would like the city to be compact because it's in the desert. But if we're talking about Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv must build in an open uh, way. Thank you very much. One or two questions? Yes, please. Uh, it's kind of two questions that are uh, with a different attitude. One is when you take the heat measurements, uh, it's interesting to see because we have the corona and the closure to see uh, the dense areas uh, with the most traffic and the most uh, factories. I think this is uh, Florentine again and uh, what you've shown that it is an effect that I, I don't think we know how to separate from the heat effect. And if you know the temperature, what does it really give you in time, in real time? Uh, how do you work with that in real time? beside hazard uh, to the public. And the second question is, in your research, have you seen a difference between a, uh, a neighborhood with a mature big trees than small trees that just has been planted and already uh, declared as green open areas? Okay, I don't have answer to all answers to all the question, but I will start uh, with the problematic problem of Tel Aviv transportation and the heat that produced by transportation, because you talked about the locked, uh, the locked, uh, the locked line. Uh, so actually, we didn't have a measurement then because it was a lockdown, and the measurements was based on our tools that we have to set up. But I can tell you something else. Uh, one of the reasons that I came exactly on time, I planned to be here uh, half an hour before, but Tel Aviv is blocked. And I think that from a certain capacity, it doesn't matter anymore. Because most of the time, Tel Aviv is blocked. Most of the time, you have a heat released by cars. The second question concerning the 
vegetation cover. So actually, we have made another, we have made another experiment, and uh, we have measured few avenues in Tel Aviv that uh, were covered with trees, and the other, like Chen uh, Belvoir, which was uh, cut by the municipality. So we could see that when the trees cover all the streets, the reduction... No. No. Can. <laughs> but I don't know what it's going on here. I don't know why. Sorry about that. So uh, the reduction of temperature is about two to three degrees. So I can imagine that if the vegetation is still young, so the impact is small. And when the vegetation is mature, uh, the impact is uh, very clear and very pronounced. Uh, but I will say that the most important factor, of course, is how to cut the trees, how to design the trees. And I don't think that we have yet the answer so in the cities. That makes them mature, right, and yes. stay longer and more effective. Okay. Can I... uh, one last question, because we still have a, the whole day to, to tackle heat island effect, so... Okay, so you talk about as I understand about how to design in the future. But at the moment in existing places, what are the acts that you think we can do? The next lecture is exactly so the question. planner perspective. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, so his question. <laughs> if I can, uh, more technical, since I'm passionate about climatology. Uh, what do you think about uh, the um, Italian effect uh, um, about Beersheba, I think it's due to the absence of wind, so the more compact structure, maybe it's for that, that is better than Tel Aviv. But what do you think about, uh, for instance, in Italy in winter, it used to be cold, and the heat island effect could uh, help to reduce the, you know, the energy to, 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 for the heating, for instance in Turin, I don't know. Um, maybe here in winter it's not so cold as in other parts, so it's, it's not a positive uh, aspect. But for instance, I don't know, in Russia, the Italian effect in winter is uh, positive. So it's, uh, it's always, um, let's say, uh, depends on the, on, the, on the place. And um, about the PAT uh, index, uh, it uh, takes into account both for um, wind, temperature, uh, humidity, uh, solar radiation, radiation and, and humidity. humidity. So it's the most complete one. Yes. Okay. So about the okay, so about the heat island during uh, the winter. So of course, it's a positive thing because it warms the city. But there is another big problem. The synoptic condition uh, that create the urban heat island, creating also enormous air pollution effect. So that's why we don't think that urban heat island, neither in winter or summer, is a positive barometer. Now, if I may answer to this guy, so uh, in Igbo I call it the fifth, the five tzaddiks, okay, which is mean vegetation, color, orientation, shading, and uh, of course uh, shading, I mean artificial shading, which is means that if I will take the Florentine neighborhood, for example, which is gray and even black, and I will plant it in, uh, paint it in white, I can reduce dramatically the temperature. If we will add vegetation, of course, we will reduce the temperature. If we will create shade in the street, we can help uh, the people which are walking in the street. So there are a lot, a lot of things to do in order to tackle uh, the urban heat island.
Okay, thank you very much.